Welcome to Transport Phenomenon on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we looked at a graph of concentration versus position, and we just looked at different points on here and determined what the net direction of passive diffusion or flux is. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to estimate the concentration gradient at a particular point on the graph. So right here, I have a point. This is my x. I'm going to call this x sub a. This is my point right here. All right. What I want to do is I want to estimate the concentration gradient at that point. All right. Now let me ask you a question, just conceptually. At this point, what is the sign of the concentration gradient? Well, the slope is negative right here, so I would expect the concentration gradient to be negative. Um, if I were to calculate flux, what would the uh, direction of net flux be? Well, we've got a negative concentration gradient, right? This is a negative number times a positive d times another negative. So negative times a negative is a positive. So the flux is positive, and positive flux is defined as being to the right, which makes sense because it'd be going down the hill. Okay. If you need more help with that, we covered those concepts in the previous video. Now what we want to do is we want to graphically estimate the derivative um, of concentration with respect to position, which is the concentration gradient. So I've got this line here. I'm going to move it up so you can kind of see. What we're essentially doing is we're going to look at this point and we're going to put a line here that represents the tangent line, the line tangent to that point on the curves. I'm kind of lowering this once again like that. Okay. And what we can do is we can use this straight line and determine the slope. Remember, slope is defined as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, although in this case y is concentration. So we can express it as c2 minus c1 over x2 minus x1. Now let's look at, let's uh, define a point. Let's define our, uh, our second point as being right here. Okay, this is our second point. Um, so what's the concentration here? Well, the concentration here is pretty easy. S is zero, all right? What's our concentration at the first point, C1? This would be 1.9, approximately, all right? Now let's look at the x's. What's our x position right here at our second point? Well, it might be about 1.25. Then what's our x position at our other point? Well, this has an x of zero right here because it's on the y-intercept, or the c-intercept, we'll say. So it's zero. Then we just calculate 0 minus 1.9, and it's going to be in units of molar, which I've indicated here. And x's are going to be 1.25 minus 0 in units of meters. And when you calculate this, you get approximately negative 1.5 molar per meter. And this is our concentration gradient. Now let me ask you a question. Is this a molecular concentration gradient or a molar concentration gradient? Well, it's in terms of molar, so that you could rewrite this units as moles per liter per meter. So because it has some degree of moles in it, it's a molar concentration gradient. Okay, Very similar to the one we saw in this other example problem in a previous video, where we had negative 0.1 mole per liter per centimeter. So that is a molar concentration gradient. All right, And this is really just that's, this is pretty much all there is to Fick's first law. Fick's first law is almost more conceptual than it is anything else. It's really all about concentration gradients and determining the, determining the direction of flux or diffusion. All right, so hopefully you learned a little bit in this video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.